So, hello everyone. Thanks for your introduction. My name is Vasilios Kitsos, and I'm going to present you a work with title Asymmetrical Sensor Configuration for Improved Sensitivity in Calorimetric High Flow Measurements in Constant Power Modes. That's quite a big title. So, basically, uh, I'm just talking about, I will talk about uh, flow sensors, and specifically fluid topology and operation, uh, mode of operation that we uh, have here. Uh, the problem at hand, which is how to improve sensitivity after the turnover velocity, uh, so for higher velocities. Uh, the design of proposed solution we have, our experimental setup and measurements, and at the end, a summary of this presentation. So, flow sensors. Flow sensors can be basically divided into two main categories, thermal and non-thermal. And thermal rely on heat transfer phenomena, and they, also, they always have a heating element, at least, and most of the times, uh, temperature sensing elements. They have no moving parts. They can be easily integrated. You can make a, a thermal flow sensor in standard CMOS technology if you want to. Um, so probably th this is the reason why they're quite reliable and this, it's quite a popular uh, uh, category of flow sensors. Uh, here we have to deal with calorimetric flow, uh, thermal flow sensor. It's a topology of uh, thermal flow sensor. Uh, its principle of operation, it's really simple. Basically, you have a heating element, like the red block in the drawing, and you have two temperature sensors symmetrically positioned next to the heater, one at the upstream, one at the downstream. So when there is no flow, as you expect, you get the heater creates an equally distributed thermal layer around it, uh, as the dotted line there. Uh, so the temperature sensors uh, ideally measure the same temperature. Uh, however, when there is flow, you get a thermal or a temperature gradient, and the temperature sensors measure different temperature. It has been, al it has been already proven that uh, the temperature difference of those, of those two sensors is related to the flow velocity. Uh, most of the thermal flow sensors, including the calorimetric, uh, had mode, have mode of operation. This basically means uh, how you deliver the power to the heater. Uh, one of them, the one that we use here, is the constant power. Really simple. You have to deliver the same power all the time, no matter the uh, flow, uh, flow is, fluid's velocity. <coughs> simple implementation, it, produces, it gives reproducible results. Its output usually qualitatively looks like that at the bottom. It increases quickly for small flow rates. Uh, then it reaches a maximum. Uh, output uh, called usually called turnover velocity, and uh, then it starts decreasing slowly. Uh, this part, the last part, uh, because usually because of uh, uh, its low sensitivity, is usually discarded. So uh, we noticed in the literature as asymmetrically placed temperature sensors have been already used in other modes, in other modalities. So we wonder if we can use asymmetrically uh, placed temperature sensors uh, uh, in constant power mode and if it can uh, work for us. Uh, to test our idea, our hypothesis, uh, we made a prototype, really simple, uh, print circuit board uh, for, a uh, for a sensor, uh, for a flow sensor, because it's easy, it's quick, it's cheap, uh, has some good properties for flow sensor. Uh, for temperature sensing elements, we used uh, three pairs, six in total, digital temperature sensors, uh, equally distributed. And as a heater, a real common thin film SMD resistor. Then uh, we made a 3D printed box and we <coughs> that can perfectly fit this, uh, sen uh, this sensor board. And we placed it inside there. As a matter of fact, it looks like that. And you can see you still have access to the sensor board from at the back side. And only the area uh, here with the dotted lines is exposed to the flow. Uh, then we took this devi uh, uh, device under test and we placed it for the, for, the, for the experimental setup that's in a structure of pipes. This is at the end connected to a microcontroller that helps us with the measurements. Just before that, you could see two commercially available flow sensors that we can use as a reference. And before that, we have an MFC, MFC, a mass flow controller. It's basically a device that creates uh, flow regimes. 
Uh, this one it can uh, create uh, flow patterns from zero to 50 liters per minute, and the fluid that we use is air. Uh, just before we move to the results, well, just before every experiment, uh, we have to calibrate our setup. As I said before, ideally, uh, the temperature difference between two uh, temperature sensors, when there is no flow is zero, practically this is not the case, never, uh, because of the individual error of the sensors, temperature sensors, plus uh, fabrication errors, uh, because practically the distances are not exactly the same, the thermal conductance from the heater to the temperature sensors is not the same. So really simple, we just turn the heater on for five minutes, more than enough time for the system to warm up, and we take the last minute to calculate an offset value that we can subtract from the results. Uh, so the results. Uh, we start with symmetrical first, because we can use it as a reference, as a reference point. Uh, on the top uh, right corner, you could see a simple drawing with the naming of the temperature sensors. Uh, just below that is the output of the flow sensor for flow rate from 0 to 50 uh, for the symmetrical uh, pairs of temperature sensors. Uh, as it was expected, well, it's quite expected output, Increase quickly, reaches a maximum, the turnover, uh, the flow rate, and then it slowly decreases. Uh, the turnover flow rate for all of them basically is from 18 to uh, 20 liters per minute. And the sensitivity uh, uh, for the sensitivity of the sensor after the turnover for high velocities, uh, as you could see, is uh, uh, 0 0.62, 0 0.62, 044, basically around an average uh, 0.05. Uh, degrees of Celsius over liters per minute, which is not that great and it doesn't follow any particular pattern. So we moved to asymmetrical ones, the asymmetrical measurements. We kept the TS2 temperature sensor, which is the closest to the heater at the downstream, and we used the TS3 and TS5, which are uh, the asymmetrical ones uh, at the upstream. You could, straight, you could see straight away that the sensitivity now for flow rates over than 25 liters per minute, uh, it goes to 0 0.18, 0 0.26, that's up to six times uh, larger uh, sensitivity compared to symmetrical measurements. Um, for the same, uh, again, for the same power, the power is 1.47. Also, uh, it's interesting to know that the turnover flow rate, the, where the maximum output occurs, uh, it has moved to the left compared to the symmetrical measurements. Now it's around 13 liters per minute instead of 20. And that's interesting because uh, uh, now you could use the asymmetrical topology for a larger, for a higher, um, for, a high, for a bigger uh, range of uh, flow rates. We also played around a little bit with the power, with the power ratings. That was quite expected. As you increase the power rating, uh, the sensitivity also increases. However, uh, the, it also moves the turnover point to the right-hand side, uh, which means that it increases the uh, dynamic rate. So, uh, in conclusion, we made uh, a cheap, easy to implement calorimetric thermoflow uh, sensor prototype uh, with multiple pairs of temperature sensors. And we tested that and got measurements using different combinations uh, for the temperature sensors that we have. And we experimentally proved that using a symmetrical located temperature sensors in constant power, uh, the turnover flow rate decreases, and most importantly, the sensitivity can increase substantially for our setup six times for the same uh, basically design, uh, same power, same components, same everything, just by playing around a little bit with the geometry. And yeah, this is it. Thank you.